a family event. Like I say, we got the food volunteered. Heck, we got five music stations here. I'm certain we could get someone to get some equipment out there and have a DJ broadcast. Heck, maybe it'd be a cross-promotion for WGAR, 99.5, or for Cleveland's only rock station, WMMS, 100.7, FM. You know what I mean? We, maybe we could get a couple radio stations involved here. They could promote it as, it'd be a win-win for Clear Channel, it'd be a win-win for our troops, it'd be a win-win for the camaraderie and brother and sisterhood of people in the city of Cleveland to get together, show off your cars, I do a nice little broadcast out there for a couple, three, whatever, three hour, whatever we got, a slot uh, open on a Saturday, say I'll even, I'm even willing to give up my Sunday night program and let them re-air the weekend instead of having it on Saturday. They could re-air it on Sunday. Most everything that's aired on that weekend program is relevant throughout the weekend. It's a win-win. It's just the way I see it. Steve. Yeah, Rick, uh, that's how, like how, another Woodstock, right? Yeah, well, how's everything out in sunny Garfield Heights? Well, it's great, except for one fact, Rick. If uh, two years ago you would have backed the man that should have been president of this country, you egg-sucking dog, you wouldn't have to worry about taking care of troops coming home. And you're doing this only for your own benefit. Why am, well, well, how, am I benefiting, how, am I ben how am I benefiting from this? You, because... Because we're going to raise money for the troops? Because we're going to... What are you, some kind of a commie pinko? What are you, some kind of a commie pinko? You do you... Screw you. What is he, a communist? I might not be happy with the current administration, but I'll tell you one thing. I would have been even more unhappy with President Gore. Sheesh. Couldn't the Democrats come up with someone I can vote for? Yes, I believe so. Wesley Clark, a four-star general who's still mulling it over. He's not certain whether he wants to run or not. He was Allied Supreme Commander of N NATO. He graduated from Oxford as a Rhodes Scholar. Decorated Vietnam Combat War veteran. He's got the Silver Star, the Bronze Star, Purple Heart. The guy's another Eisenhower. He's not a politician. He's electable. He's on the fence. He has not said that he'd commit. But all inkling has it that if he is going to run, it's going to be as a Democrat. Now, I went to his website. Well, it's not his website. It's a website supporting him for president, draftwesleyclark.com. And you can go there and sign a petition. This guy, at least he's not a politician. Did you notice that John Kerry is now John F. Kerry? There he is, there's John F. Kerry riding his Harley Davidson without a helmet on to show him how much of a rebel he is. What's John Kerry done since Vietnam? Yes, I know. He's got a bronze star, too. And he's got three purple hearts. And he's not a dum-dum, but what's John Kerry done since Vietnam? To my knowledge, he's been a politician. And he talks like a politician, and he walks like a politician, and he stinks like a politician. We need to get these stinking politicians that have been in there forever out of office and try something new once in a while, people. You keep voting for the same bums over and over, and there's people out there that are qualified that you don't give them a chance. If Wesley Clark runs, he'll have his biggest supporter in Cleveland sitting right here behind the microphone. Because when he's interviewed, he speaks without stammering or stumbling or looking around like he's t trying to dream up answers. We live in a time when the military man in office, another Eisenhower, might not be a bad idea. He didn't shuffle off to the Texas Air National Guard. Am I thrilled with the current president? president? No. Am I extremely unhappy with him? No. I question some of the ideas. It, it, it almost seems to me that uh, the president can take these long vacations or spend time on his ranch in Crawford, Texas, because someone else is, is running everything anyway. So, you know, he's, he's just the, the good-looking guy that was electable. But the Republican War Party is more or less running what's going on behind the scenes. Here, I get off on a tangent and everyone wants to talk. Well, I just had to get that off my chest. This guy thinks I'm doing this just to help me. What does it help me to get seven seconds on, on, on the TV? Look, Rick Gilmore's having a car show. Look at that, to raise money for the troops. Okay, let's move on to the weather. I appreciate that. That's all the time they have on TV. They're not going to spend an hour on it. Is it going to get me a raise? No. 
Am I going to pull some of the profits out and try and put them in my pocket? Absolutely not. Have I lied to you yet? Until I do, consider me an honest man. Joe, you're on the air. Hey, Rick. Yes. This is Joe. Yes. I'm a veteran myself, Vietnam. Got a son-in-law who's in the Navy right now, served in uh, Desert Storm. Uh, if there's anything I can do to help, you've got my support. I can get you veterans uh, from VFW Post, American Legion, just about anything you need for help. I'll tell you what, can I put you on hold and you can give your phone number to uh, to my good producer screener, uh, uh, Edmund, working hard in the other room, and then he can get that info. And if, if we pull this thing off, I'll definitely uh, get, get a hold of you. Uh, you sure can. All right, let me do that. Hey, Edmund, uh, if you get a chance, go to line four and get that gentleman's information. He's a veteran who says he's willing to help out any way he can. Yeah, and why not get the VFWs involved? This thing could be huge. I looked around outside and I thought, maybe this parking lot isn't big enough. Maybe we'd have to use the back parking lot, too. I don't know. Or ask one of the neighboring businesses. Is everyone off on, uh, everyone off on Saturday? We got this great charity event. We'll mention your building name for whatever it is we have to do to make you happy. This thing could be huge. Look, another Joe. Howdy, welcome to the program. Hi, this is uh, Joe from Rocky River. Yes, sir. Uh, there's a very similar uh, deal going on at the Cleveland Casting, casting Plant, uh, August 24th. And it says here what? The American Cruisers is hosting their annual 11th annual Cruising for Shoe benefit car show and cruise in. And it said the event draws paying applicants from all over Northeast Ohio to enter vehicles to a car show and road cruise. And it's going to be held in the Cleveland Casting Plant parking lot. For those who don't know, that's the Ford plant, right? Yeah, the Ford plant. And right. they're expecting a thousand beautiful cars, it says. Yeah, I've spoken with Cadillac Mike over at American Cruisers in the past. He's a good guy. And uh, I was thinking, well, you know, all we'd have to do is maybe, because I know Shoes for Kids is a great event, and I usually, if I can, go to those car shows every year that they try and raise money for that charity, we could just have it a different weekend. These guys, these guys if the weather's nice, they're all, they'll all take their cars out, and oh, all, yeah. especially to help, to help support the troops. Yeah, and it said here all the proceeds from the show go to the charity, so that's good, too. Well, that's what I wanted to do with this show, too. Yeah. Obviously, I don't know. I mean, obviously, there may be, I don't know. I mean, there may be some expense. Would we, would we have to pay overtime maybe to have a couple of cops roaming around for a little security? You know what I'm, but I don't, that's not a huge chunk of money. No, not really. And uh, what it says, uh, various plant, oh, wait. It said they're going to have uh, live music, uh, new Ford vehicles, which we wouldn't have on this one. It has a uh, fundraising 50-50 Chinese raffle, too, they said, just to get some more money. Well, let's put it this way. We, could, we would not necessarily have to rule out having somewhere uh, a, a set up by some car dealership if they're going to kick some money to the charity and they want to show off their new vehicles. And people, we could probably arrange something like that. I don't see I mean, as long as the money goes to charity. Yeah. Uh, do they have anything listed on that information uh, as to how much it costs to register your car? Because I really am unsure as to what amount I would want to have people. No, no, do. they don't, but it has a couple phone numbers to call for registration. Sure, go ahead. Uh, there's a, it says call Jim at 440-234-6823. And there's a Gary at 440-777-9130. And another Jim at 216 Nine six one seven six two three. And and where did you find this flyer for this? Uh... Well, uh, I uh, I work part time at Ford. I'm a Ford retiree, but I work part time there now, and I got it through the email. Oh, okay. Well, why don't you have somebody email the information to me, Gilly, G-I-L-L-Y, at W-T-A-M dot com, because uh, the American Cruisers are a bunch of good guys. That's American cars. Get them involved in this as well. And, you know, it's, I, I, every year I always mention that Shoes for Kids show because that's a, it's a good cause and a, it, all the money goes to charity. How, it's another, another win-win. Yeah, that's Gilly at what? W-T-A-M dot com. Yeah, I don't have my original, but I can uh, get a hold of the guy that... Uh put it out tomorrow. I have them send you a copy. I'd appreciate it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Triple Doppler weather from TV3 meteorologist Betsy Kling tonight. Some thunder possible out there. Changeable atmosphere. Low 60s. Tomorrow, nice day, huh? Tomorrow and Tuesday, low 80s, currently 71 degrees in Cleveland, 71. Get out there tomorrow and Tuesday and play Garden Weasel and, and clean up all them weeds. And I just hope it does not rain on the 4th of July. You're going to stop down to Glenn Beck's Real American 4th of July at uh, Cahoon Park there in Bay Village. There's just... Uh, look, we got Bill Wells there. 
doing his program. Casey Coleman and Bill was doing that program there in the morning. You know, he starts you off. And then Glenn Beck until noon. They're live at Cahoon Park. And Mike Trevisano is going to be on stage. They got dunk tanks. They got games. They got all kinds. Of, they got Jingles the Clown. He's going to make those balloons into giraffes and that sort of thing. You can get a hold of Jingles if you, if you want to have a party. Log on to JinglesTheClown.com. Say, thank God for the Internet, huh? You got CookingInTheComfortZone.com for the... Billy that said he'd volunteer all the help out feeding all the people if we pull this car, car and bike rally off. Or you can call Jingles. Give him a jingle at 216-429-2252 if you want to book Jingles. And we're also going to have Ray's Exotic Animal Show. That's not Ray Davis, is it? What kind of an exotic animal show would Ray Davis have? I'm not wearing any pants. Film at 11. No, no, it's Ray Anderson. He's been doing animal shows for 15 years. He's been on the TV. He's trained animals for commercials and done reptile shows at the zoo. And if you want to book Ray for an event for Ray's exotic animal show, you can give him a call at area code, the classic area code, 216-381-1130. That's 216-381-1130. So stop out there on the 4th of July, Cahoon Park. If you don't know where it is, well, look it up. It's not hard to find. Out there in Bay Village, and we'll pack the place. I'm personally going to show up, and I'm, just in case, I'll bring an umbrella. Because I don't think, it, I hope it, that, that would be the worst case scenario, is that it was like 4th of July, do you recall 4th of July, 1969? The day the fireworks got rained out all over the city of Cleveland, and lots of damage, and boy, what a lightning show. I was a little kid, and I remember watching the lightning, and it, I was just upset that I just didn't get to see fireworks, but I, I don't even remember if they rescheduled. Heck, that's been a million years ago. Bob in a truck. You're on the air. Yeah, I have a pickup that's done up in red, white, and blue. I, it's like a 2000 Ford Ranger, and it's an American truck. Yeah. I drive truck for a living, and I don't catch you all, all over like I used to, but I think we should allow some of the patriotic uh, vehicles in if we're going to do it for the troops, because I'm a veteran, too. Well, sure. I didn't think that there should be a cutoff. I just thought that the, there shouldn't be uh, a bunch of you know little foreign cars there, because this should be an American car and bike show for our American troops. I agree. That'll work. I mean, I, I'm home usually on, every weekend. Uh, I'll just have to catch you on some Sunday night and make sure I get the details and stuff because I don't. I used to be able to hear you all over the country, but I don't know if it's our trucks that don't pick up the signal or your signal's not reaching us like it used to. Hmm. It might be the trucks because we have not changed anything on as far as our uh, signal strength. Okay, then I'll just have to. Uh, I guess I can just call the radio station and get, keep on getting information for it. I'll tell you what, just keep it tuned to my program Sunday nights from 9 to midnight. And as, as this progresses, uh, and I hope it does, well, then I'll pass that information along to you. Okay. And I, I, I'm also on other times besides just Sunday nights sometimes, so just keep it tuned right here to the big one. Okay, that's, you know, I'm just trying to keep informed because I, I'll bring my uh, pickup truck out that uh, it was all done by. Uh, with graphics and stuff for uh, red, white, and blue and stuff. It, you'll like it when you see it. All right. Yep, just keep it right here. Keep it tuned right here to Cleveland's only news radio, WTAM 1100, and they'll keep you apprised. Of, I, I hope I can pull this off. The response seems to be, uh, well, pretty good tonight. Matt, you're on the air. Rick, this is Matt from North Ridgeville with the Pontiac. This is my buddy, Matt. You betcha. I've known you for how long now? Oh, a good uh, 20-some years. Yeah, and Matt's got a couple of, him and his dad have a couple of beautiful 2 plus 2 Pontiacs, a 65 and a 66, and then they were in a Pontiac magazine and everything. They're beautiful. Well, thank you. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you can count us into coming to your car show. We'd love to do it. Yeah, I thought it was a good idea. We could raise money for the troops and try and help out. Even, even if we could not pull off the reception center, which I'd like to, uh, we could at least give money to the USO or, or come up with some way that all the money, it's not a political rally, and all the money for entering your car goes to help out our troops. You betcha. It's a great idea. That, I thought it was. I was sitting around thinking, well... You know, if I run it by management and they poo-poo it, uh, they, if they poo-poo it later just because we can't do it, it's not because they would feel somehow that we didn't want to support our troops. You know, maybe there's a logistical problem. I don't know. But I thought, you know, let's, let's just throw it out on the air and see how many people think it's a good idea. You're right. That's a good idea, Rick. Why not? You know, it's always better to say you're sorry for something you have done than something you didn't. <laughs> you got it. All right, Matt. Thanks. Okay, Rick. Well, have a nice night. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, and I saw your buddy at the VFW you go out and have chicken wings with. Oh, okay. The, the guy you used to work with? My friend Jim. Yeah. He's yeah. Qu quite a character. You betcha. Okay, Rick. Well, have a nice night. All right. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. Carol, you're on the air. Okay. Mine's a different subject, but what I wanted to ask is about people should do something about the government 
and make them retire at 65 in reference to Senator Thurman being 100 years old. Now, if he was forced to retire at, thir at 65, some young fella could have, or a young woman could have got in there for 35 years in the 35 years that he was extra. Absolutely right. I mean, he was just a career politician through and through, and I, I would have to think that in his latter years he was completely ineffective. But how do you go about uh, forcing that against the government? Some of them are there, well, even like your Supreme Court, I think there was, what was it, Douglas? He was 92. Well, I think it's, I, you know... When we I should make them get out at 65 like everybody else gets booted out. I will tell you one thing, and, and, and uh, appreciate you checking in, Tigris. I, uh, I will tell you one thing as far as the Supreme Court goes. That's probably the one example, and, and these, these people are very intelligent for the most part, right, that end up on the Supreme Court. We do not generally in this country respect our elders like they do in other countries. Now, unless these people are, are getting a little daft and they're pixelated, unless they can't find their car keys, or if they do find them, they don't know what they do. They don't know what the car keys are for. There is wisdom in age. I would think there's a difference between folks on the Supreme Court who, to my knowledge, not a lot of them were lifetime politicians before they got appointed. They were judges. Now, I know sometimes judges are elected, but that's just, that's different. The idea of some of these other politicians that have been around forever and ever and ever and ever, it's just too much. Lester Maddox passed away this week. I, unless I'm mistaken, and you'll let me know, 5, 7, 8, 11, 100, I, have to, I, I don't even know if I could... He made a statement, I believe it was Lester Maddox, in the early 60s. And to my knowledge, this was what he was most famous for. I was telling my neighbor this yesterday, I says, yeah... Heading out someplace, you know, and I says, you know what, and I'll clean it up as best I can. And Lester Maddox said this in public and still hung around and got reelected by the, the yokels. He said, all them, insert derogatory term here for black people, need is tight, uh, insert uh, derogatory term for female genitalia, loose shoes and a warm place to insert dirty word for defecation that was his famous quote boy thank and, and my neighbor says to me gee so i guess you're going to go out and uh, hoist a cold one in memory of lester maddox i said not in my hand not in my hand as we travel through this life and you know what we're just visitors here on this planet we're only here for a short while can you both can you believe that there were people out there that would make comments like lester maddox and, and to have the Dixie Crat Party like Strom Thurmond, and, and their constituency kept voting for them and voting for them and voting for voting them in, voting them in. A bunch of hillbillies, a bunch of brain dead hillbillies keep voting them people into office. I mean, even George Wallace, I didn't believe him when he did the big turnaround either. He just did it because he wanted to get reelected. Unbelievable. If you're on the line, be patient. I'm Mark Gilmore, the driving man's friend. Coverage of what in the world's happening? Some important words, and then more of the program here on Cleveland's only news radio. Do we have the support? I think we do. To have a charity car and bike show of American cars and bikes to raise money for our American troops. This is, as they say, Cleveland's only news radio. WTAM 1100. LeBron James. LeBron James. LeBron James. LeBron James. LeBron James. Chosen one. Well, sometimes last year, our crown was sometimes bigger than the cash. <laughs> so it's really no pressure. And I told him, yeah, I'll see you in Cleveland because it's going to be lit up like Vegas. Travel the path to the promised land. Your Cavaliers mothership. I'm not going to come up to the team and, you know, just say I'm the leader. I'm just going to try to fit in and do what I need to do to help my team win. The new NBA era. It's going to be a new and improved team this year in the Eastern Conference. The home of Cavaliers basketball. Radio WTAM. Grassroots level. Taking your response at 578 1100 or 578 1111 in the classic 216 area code. Is there enough support for a charity car show of American cars and bikes to show up? We've got the venue. I would think even if we've got the lead time, people take their cars and bikes out until the weather turns bad. You, you, you don't think that our troops are going to be, you know, coming home from overseas for good, do you? Anytime within the next couple of months. We could have this in August. We could have it in early September. All we'd have to do is 
and deal with those sweat bees. Them damned annoying September sweat bees that come out and hang around. But we've got food volunteered. We've, we've got a huge parking lot. We could have it on a Saturday afternoon. I'm judging by your response on the phone lines. Do you have a classic car? Do you have a classic American car? Do you have an interesting vehicle? You got a sweet looking Harley? I want these lines lit all night to see if there's enough response for me to go to management and say, listen, we got the food volunteered. We could use our lot. We could have overflow in the back lot. I need to hear from a beverage distributor or someone who'd be willing to maybe supply the, the soft drinks. How about that? But I'm judging by your response this evening on the phones, broadcasting live from the cultural void of Independence, Ohio, that could have a charity car show to raise money to help our troops. And if the lines are not filled all night long, well, then the management will say, well, you know, obviously, you, Rick, you won't, you won't muster up enough support. Can I do it? Can I rely on you, the listener, to Cleveland's only news radio, WTAM 1100, to support a charity car show sometime before fall to raise money to help our troops? Are you with me? I need to hear from you. Chuck, you're on the air. Yes, how you doing, Rick? All right. Good, good. Listen, I met you uh, at the uh, your smoker's uh, little rally that you had on Brook Park Road, but I'd like to touch some bases with you, if I may. The smoker's rights rally. Yes, sir. There you go. Yes, sir. And uh, you're giving your age away. I was I already graduated from high school when you were watching them fireworks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're giving your age away. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I don't mind. But uh, I don't mind either. But uh, if you need some help, I will help you. I've got a Harley, and I know a lot of people that do. And if you want to get back with me on something, you can get through a mutual friend that we both have. It's we the people. All right, and I'll tell you what, that's what we need. I need to hear from people. And you can do that, believe me, because we can do that. And I've got a lot of guys that ride Harleys, and we could do, I could touch base with a couple of the dealerships to see what we could do with it. I appreciate and that. Back at it. And but, also, there must be someone out there listening within the sound of my voice that knows someone who could call up from, say, Rolling Thunder or one of those uh, Harley motorcycle groups, the Harley charity groups, that they'd be interested in getting involved as oh, well. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there. But uh, you also have to remember a few things, and I want to bring people down to a level. Now, I said, do you know that your state taxes are going to go up again, your property taxes? Yeah, Tuesday. They are. Now, everybody in, uh, in Cuyahoga County, and actually Taft wanted them higher. And because he wants to do is fix the roads. So in my opinion right now, you're talking about cars and stuff. I would like to have bikers for better roads because they've got a lot of money coming in right now on that 22 cents or 21 cents gas tax on it. They take in somewhere about a billion, 800 million, and they don't give a lot of it back. If, I mean, you can go to a website that they have, and you can actually see out of 1 billion, 800 million, they might give... 200 or 300 million back it's all trickled down to your cities and municipalities and where's the rest of this go and they're talking yeah. about raising the price of gasoline a couple cents go. a gallon well that's that's what they want to do but what what they're looking at and i'm willing to bet and people uh, people might uh, go back and forth on that there's probably 15 people or more in every office of every in every state government that should not be there because you have so many people at the higher end that do nothing but shuffle paper. And I'm not saying that people that don't work the roads, don't clean the roads, don't repair the roads. These people work. But I'm tired of the bureaucrats that they turn around and insert by just even going over the, the civil service test. Because they, they just hire them. Because they're somebody's political flunky or political appointee. And you know what Bob the Jellyfish Taft is planning on doing? I hear rumblings that trying to appease the people... He's going to try and get rid of E-Check. I would like to, Well, he's not going to do it because he's got to remember also if he gets rid of E-Check, the people who set it up that have the political appointees uh, in politics and, and, and across the United States, they will still get their money no matter if you have it here or not. And my opinion is a lot of people should start thinking about this. Just what they did in California, Proposition 13, drop all the property taxes in the state and see what Jellyfish Taft got to say about that. Yeah, but then look at California. They're going broke. Well, the only reason they're going broke is because all the Mexicans and the bleeding heart liberals out there, they're giving everybody hospitalization. When they bring a, a girl across the border that's pregnant, turns around and says, well, she's a citizen now. No, she's not. She's an illegal alien that got here illegally. She had the baby here. Send her back. What they do, they bring her family here, her mother, father, her uncle, because they're all distressed, put them on welfare. They're killing that state out there. Yeah, there's something in the air in California getting women pregnant. I think, you know what I think? 
think it is. I think it's in the water, and they're not taking the right vitamins, buddy. It, it's so there, listen, it, you got a good show going. Yep. And keep it up. And like I said, if you need to get in touch with me, you know how to. All right, thanks. All right, bless you. All right, thanks. Bless you back. Something in the air in California getting these illegal alien women pregnant. It's their legs. How are we going to pay for all this stuff? How are we going to pay for anything? I don't even know. I'm not even certain what the government does. If, what, if, what if we have a charity car rally of American cars and bikes to raise money and we end up giving it to the USO? Do, 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 we, even, do we know that the troops are going to get entertained? I'm leery of everyone and everything. I don't trust. Do you trust any politicians? Who do you trust that's in office now? Senator Voinovich tells Bob the Jellyfish Taft what to do. Dick Cheney and Donald Rumsfeld probably tell George Bush what to do. They come up with these points every once in a while, but other than that, for the most part, most of these politicians just stink. Stinko, they've been in there too long. Lester Maddox and Strom Thurmond. And over and over and over and over. Dennis Kucinich and, and these names you hear for a million years, and all they do is make money by being a politician. How does that help us? You'd drive up from downstate. How do you know? You could tell you're in Cuyahoga County, even if they didn't put a sign up. The bump, 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 bump. All them chuckles out there and drive down Ridge Road and Ladybug Jane Campbell, the queen of the flying hubcap. Get these roads fixed. Get on a stick. They just keep taxing us more and more and more. That's why we need things like car shows and diversionary things that, if nothing else, we can at least... Have it twofold and raise some money to try and do some good. We can do it, but we have to do it. No one's going to do it for us. No one else in this town's beating their fist and saying we need to have a charity car show to try and raise money to try and maybe get a reception center for our troops that come back and they don't got nobody to talk to. Maybe their wife's screwing around on them because she figured he was going to go over there and die and she'd get the money. And she's... Who would he talk to about that? What if he had horrible nightmares about things that they'd seen while they were in combat? I've got the veterans. I've got the veterans. We don't got the money. We don't got the money to rent a building every month. The veterans will do it for nothing. They'll volunteer their time. We got to have a building. Got to have a building either downtown near the bus station or near Hopkins Airport. With these veterans, they come home and they got a two-week, three-week, whatever, six-week turnaround. It's probably not even that long. They come back and they want to have someone to talk to because they're getting shipped off to someplace else. That's why this car show, this charity, this charity event would not have to be tomorrow. It'd have to be while the weather's nice. That's, that's the only criteria. We got the venue. I'm sure we could use our lot. We got a guy who's volunteered the food. I got callers coming in saying that they know people that have Harleys and cars and... I need to hear from somebody out there from a car club that's willing to get involved as well. Need to hear from a beverage company. Somebody, we need, can we get the porta potties? Can we get them here? When I try and pull something off like this, well, nobody wants to pay for it. We need volunteers. Do you understand that? Just like during World War II, where people would be block watchers, they'd walk around and make sure that if there was an air raid siren, everyone turned off their lights. We need to think like that again. We need to come together. We need to come together. You gotta keep you gotta keep peeking over your shoulder. The terrorists aren't gone. They're still around somewhere. Thank God, knock on wood, we seem to have been doing a halfway decent job of trying to weed people out here in this country. And maybe some folks just disappeared. I don't know where they went. Maybe they were bad people that disappeared, and I don't care where they went. But I feel that we should give something back to the community. We should give something back to our troops, besides an attaboy and a pat on the back on the radio. And unfortunately, in this big, mean old world that we've got, money is a huge, huge part of it. And that's what charity's for. And that's what this car show would be, charity. Give a little. Tim. Well, uh, greetings, Rick. Oh, it's Tim from the center of the universe, Parma, Ohio. The land of pink flamingos, chrome balls, and Virgin Mary bird baths. And where all good things emanate from. You bet. Forever. <laughs> you, 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 your thoughts, sir? Um, I like the idea of using the USO, frankly, for a donation center. Um, I think it'd be. I think it could work. Uh, you're right, though. We do need to hear from a beverage beverage distributor, soft drinks only, and let's keep the politics out of this. Oh, no politics. I'm not. I would not invite any politicians at all. It would be a radio broadcast where we would just 
sit there, talk cars, the radio broadcasts over, and whatever else is on and programming comes on, and then you just stick around and shake hands and meet and greet, and, and, and uh, like I say, I think we've got five music stations in the same building. I would think we could cross-promote and get somebody out there, DJ and spinning some records or whatever, they could cross-promote, make it an event for them, too. I agree, I agree. Just let's leave the soapboxes at home. That's right. We don't need the soapboxes. We're here to support the troops. That's, That's right. That's something we can all agree upon. That's right. It doesn't matter whether you're a Democrat, Independent, Republican. Uh, it doesn't matter at all. I mean, heck, I hate to say this. It wouldn't even matter if you were a non-voter. As long as you were trying to support the troops, I would think that you could get off your ass if you're over 18 and register to vote. But exactly. Even yeah. still, it would be open to people. Hey, if, it would be open to people that believe in God or don't. You know, it doesn't matter because it's the troops we're talking about here. That's the only thing we're talking about. It doesn't matter what your political persuasion is or anything else. Just go out there and support the troops. All we need to hear from from what you from what you're telling me is uh, the USO sounds like a good venue in order in order to donate the money. Do we know that if we donate the money to the USO, it goes exactly where we would like it to go? Well, that would be something we would need to research, wouldn't it? Yeah, I guess it would. I mean, one would assume that you just immediately trust when you hear the USO. You, you would hope that it's going to go to help entertain and, and help uh, do something to lighten our troops' days a little bit when they're not over there getting shot at, wherever, in 40 countries around the world. Everyone focuses on Iraq and forgets about all the other countries that the troops are in and, and are in possibly in harm's way, or they're away from their friends and family for extended periods of time, and then people say, yeah, well, I know they signed up and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. I mean, the troops in South Korea, are they in harm's way? Uh, not as we speak. Does, does that mean they won't be in harm's way tomorrow? Exactly. Um, you've got some crack interns there at the station. Why don't they research and see uh, how legitimate the USO is? I think it's a pretty legitimate organization. I think it, it, I think it is as well. And like I said, we've got some lead time on this thing. And the, it, the, it, the USO is not the only organization. If we, if we decided we looked into it and thought, well, you know, the USO, I don't know. You know, I mean, uh, we, we, we'd find a way to make sure that the money does exactly what we want it to do. It's our money, and uh -huh. we're trying to help. That's why I said, instead of just coming down here and, and prattling on, like I said, it wasn't a real heavy news night tonight. I mean, it's, what am I going to do, debate whether or not Catherine Hepburn should have died? <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, instead of just coming down and cashing your check, you know, try to do some good. Try, try once in a while to, you know, try, I, I don't know how else. I'm not rich. You know what I mean? I don't know how else. I, I, I cannot look into my wallet and just give a ton of money. I just can't do that. Uh, if I had $50,000, there'd be people waiting for, you know, me to hand it to them. I mean, th that's just the way it is. You know, if every listener within the sound of our voices right now kicked in a dollar to the USO through this event right here, I think it would be a very, very good thing. Now, granted, there are going to be some people that can afford to donate $500,000, dollars, and that's great. Frankly, I'd just like to see one dollar from every listener within the sound of our voice. Well, if we get the car show going, I think we could charge, you know, so much for cars and bikes to get in. They're all American cars, all American bikes, have a nice all-American show. And I think we could charge, and I'll have to find out what other charity events charge to get their cars in, and it's probably 10 bucks or 15 or I don't know what it is. I would think that people out there would say, you know what, maybe, it, maybe I won't go out to dinner tonight with the wife, and I'll take the 15 bucks and, and my 59 Buick, and I'll shoot over there to that charity event or whatever. I mean, it's really, we're not talking about a ton of dough here. We're just talking about something fair to help the troops, and I think there are people out there scratching their heads saying, how can I help? I think this would be a great way for this is how you could help. I agree, I agree. And maybe the station could kick in, I don't know, bumper stickers, what? What would you say, bumper stickers? Well, we got those those static stickers that you put on your windows and that sort of thing. Well, that's good, all right, you know. We got keychains. Right off on that. Let's, let's go ahead and get the station to kick in a little something there. Well, management must be loving me right now. They're thinking, Rick, you didn't even call and ask me anything. You just went on the air and started talking about some event that now it takes all this planning. Well, we've got a lot of lead time, and if we get enough people to say they'll volunteer and enough people, this is what's important. I need to hear from people saying, you know what? Rick, if you pull this thing off, I'll be there with my old car. I own a blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'll be there with my, with my bike. It's a something, or, you know what I mean? That's what I need. I need to hear from you out there. I need to hear from you, and that's why I opened up the contest lines as well, because all the other lines have been filled, 5, 7, 8, 11, 11, in the 216 area code. And if management listens, as they always do, the ever-prying ears of Ray Davis, uh, if you they... must be having apoplexy right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? If we pull it off, everyone wins. The USO wins. The troops win. We win. The people with their cars had something to do. They had a nice event to go to, and they didn't just think it was just going out there and sitting in their lawn chair and telling people their car looked nice. They can go home and say, you know what, I feel good about myself. Maybe, I, maybe it was hot, or maybe I'm tired, but you know what? It was a good kind of hot and tired.
Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, let's, let's just bring the old cars, the old bikes out, out there. No booze, no drugs, and please, no politics whatsoever. That's right. I want to leave politics out of it completely. Exactly. All right, Tim, thank you. Got to go. Bye. All right, bye-bye. Yep, leave politics out of this. A charity event and the cars. Uh, have you? Have you? Maybe you've never been to a car show. Maybe you think, well, gee, I don't know where it is or where they have them. Or you know, if we had enough lead time, you'd know exactly where this car show would be and when it was. And it'd be a family event. And if, I don't care if you're eight or ninety-eight, you could come out and look around. Maybe we could get somebody to volunteer a shuttle bus. We could get people. You know, maybe they have to park in the back parking lot and get a bus to be running back and forth from the front to the back, from the front to the back. It's a bit of a hike. Not if you're 25, but, you know, that way you just get a little ride up there and you know, look around at the cars and the bus runs back and forth all day long until, you know, all start the show in the afternoon, have it go until dark, something like that, and then broadcast somewhere in the middle of it. Sounds like a great idea. I wonder how much money we could raise. I wonder. I, I, I would think something like that. If I, if I pushed it properly, we would have this parking lot filled just with the cars and the bikes. People would have to park in back. We'd have to figure out how many cars and bikes we could fit out here and have to set a limit on it. We'd have to set a limit on it and get people to, you know, get in line, register, that sort of thing. I'll take care of those details. We're going to need, maybe we'll need flyers printed up. Maybe we need a printing company out there, somebody to volunteer that. As I start going on the air and saying, well, I want to have this and I want to have that, and the management's going to start saying, well, Rick, we got a budget. Who's going to pay for this? You springed something on it. You sprung it on us. Well, if nothing else, it was a good idea, and I floated it, right? If nothing else, we'll give it a whirl. See how the response is. So far, it's been pretty good. Triple Doppler forecast from TV3 meteorologist Betsy Kling. Tonight, thunder and rain are possible. Some rumblings out there with a changing atmosphere. Low in the low 60s. Tomorrow and Tuesday, beautiful days. Looks like lows in the, or I should say highs, in the low 80s. Currently 71 degrees in Cleveland, 71. If you're on the lake, what are you doing out there? It's dark. Don't you have to go to bed? That's all I can say. Rick, you're on the air. Hey, Rick, every time you, I know you're a genius, but every time you talk about illegal immigration, just remember that America attacked Mexico illegally and stole that land, all right, genius? Well, you know, hello? Well, hang it in my ear, will ya? you? You know when you look at a globe of the world... You look at a globe and you see all those little lines in between, you know, and you'll see one says Germany and then there's a little line all the way around it, and then France and there's a little line all the way around it. Or like Iraq, for example. There's a little line all the way around Iraq. Those were all set by wars. Those were all set by warriors, troops. Those were all put on the back of people that had to carry a knife or a gun and fight it out between each other to see like a bunch of ants in an ant farm, who lives where and who owns what. So don't be lumping in Americans, we, we attacked Mexico. Well, you know what? Mexico has probably attacked somebody else too. Everybody's attacked somebody. I'm not dealing with that right now. I'm dealing with the fact that we got troops in 40 countries around the world. And we, you and me, we the people can do something to try and help. And that's why I thought a car show would be a great idea. Mike, you're on the air. Mr. Gilmore. Yes, sir. I just think that car show would be an excellent idea. I mean, that's primo. I really like that. Yeah, American cars, American bikes, uh, a charity event, raise money for, for if we can't get a reception center for the troops in Cleveland, we can at least raise money for the USO or another organization that, that does things to help out the troops. I think it would be a big plus. And you had an earlier caller talk about the governor and his taxes. Yes. My question for you is how can you tax your way to prosperity? I just, you know, I just don't see how, you know, it's a win. I, I really think that my ideas that I've had that some people poo-poo, I think would help. Uh, I'm, you know, uh, what about a casino instead of people taking their money out of state? Uh, you know, what about the idea of having a NASCAR track that I've heard that idea floated around? And what about that idea of building a NASCAR track, say, out in Lorain County that brings in three, 400,000 people twice a year and then has smaller events during the year? Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, ideas like that. I mean, all we can do is, is instead of stumbling our way through this life and doing nothing, uh, let's try to do something here. I mean, if the, if the place is falling apart because of crappy politicians, then you know what? It's on the backs of us. Us. We, we're going to have to fix this. Hey, I'm with you. All right, brother. Thanks. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. All right.
And, and, and that's why when somebody asks me, gee, Rick, uh, don't you think you ought to run for dog catcher or councilman or something? What good am I going to be able to do? I'd have to go uh, beg at the feet of the media. Guess what? I'm in the media. I'm Rick Gilmore, the thinking man's friend. More of the program, more of your phone calls. After these important words and coverage of what in the world's happening on the only important news radio station, the only news radio station in town. Can you tell me if there's another news radio station in town? Uh, no, this is Cleveland's only news radio. WTAM 1100. The following material may not be suitable for all listeners. Listener discretion is advised. What you have done is wrong. Well, not yet. I think what I'm doing is right. 5, 7, 8, 11, 100 in the classic 216 area code. If you want to try and get through, get through real quick before, uh, I guess my, uh, producer Edmund has the green apple quick step or something. Has to <laughs> run out of the room. Right, big voice man? The Rick Kilmore Show on News Radio WTAM 1100. So here's the deal. What I'm trying to get is a show of support here on the phones this evening to see if we can get enough response to warrant having a... A charity car show of American cars and uh, American motorcycles and get together to raise money for our troops. Have it sometime before the summer's over. Have it. I think we could have the venue right down here at the radio station. We've got a great big parking lot. We're going to need to hear from people who are willing to donate things. I already had a call from a gentleman who said he'd like to donate the food. He'd like to cook. He'll, he volunteered to cook. I don't know if he'll do donate the food. That sounds expensive, but I guess he'll donate to cook it. I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of details to work out. We're going to need porta potties. You know, we're going to need some, some soft drinks. Somebody out there, I'll tell you what you do. Let me know, even if you do not own an old car, would you be interested in coming to a charity car show and bike show and taking a look around at some beautiful American vehicles? Would you be interested in that? Is that something that tickles your fancy? Maybe you'll work for a beverage distributor. I, don't, I do not want you overwhelming my management with phone calls. You want to email? This is my baby, Gilly, G-I-L-L-Y, at WTAM.com. My computer's busted again. But I'll stop in, you know, use the computer here at work and check out what's going on. And, the, you know, we got enough things going on this week with the gun back Real American 4th of uh, July over at Cahoon Park. Obviously, what day is, it gonna, is that on uh, duh, the 4th of July? We got lots of stuff going on. So they, they don't need to hear from you. They, they, uh, hey, I'm watching Channel 3. There's that guy on TV that was at the Smokers' Rights Rally. How about that? So anyway, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do is just uh, check your response and... And see what you think. So far, it's been pretty good. That's why I opened up the contest lines at 5, 7, 8, 11, 11 in the 216 area code. This would be a beautiful cross promote, wouldn't it? We could have uh, WMJI, Magic 105.7, Cleveland's oldies station. Wouldn't that be great? We, could have, we wouldn't even need a band. Maybe we could hook up with them, get them to pipe some music out there. Get some speakers out there and just listen to oldies. It's a, that, that, old cars, old bikes, oldies music. It, it, the glove fits. This all fits. There's no losers. Get some people volunteering. It's all going to help the troops. I think it's a grand idea. Everybody loves looking at old cars. And this would be like a, kind of a, a new place to go because sometimes you go to those car shows and, you know, you go to the same car show and you see the same cars all the time. They, they all go to Brunswick because they live out that way. Or they all go to Solon because they live out that way. Here, calling the radio station, just let it keep ringing. Right now, I'm a little shorthanded. It happens sometimes. But the idea is, it, say you go to work and you work for a beverage distributor during the week, or you work for someone who you think maybe your company might like to get involved somehow. Send me an email. Shoot me an email. Gilly, G I L L Y at WTAM.com. You know, run it by the boss. Maybe you work for a, I don't know, that somebody out there has to work for a company that has porta potties or or Coca-Cola, or maybe you drive a Pepsi trucker. I don't know. Run it by the boss. Be good exposure for you, and, and, and it's all going for... I think it would be a win-win. It's all going for a, a great cause. I, I, I see no downfall. I'm sure, they'll, I'm sure they'll find one. Joe, you're on the air. Hey, Rick. Howdy. Hey, uh, <clears throat> I'd uh, support going to your car show. But uh, I was thinking, instead of donating the money to the USO, if you want to make sure it gets all used to how you want it to be you could and to help people out locally you could contact a reserve center that has uh, deployed units over there and donate it you know directly to them and i'm sure they could you know put it to good use 
Right. I mean, the details are a little sketchy right now, but I think we have plenty of lead time that we could find out what to do and make sure that all the money that was raised, all the profits, would go to go exactly where we want it to go. We don't want it to go into anybody's pockets, right? We want it to go to help the troops. Yeah, I, I'm sure it would if you'd send it to the USO, too, but I'm, I'm sure it would just go into a general fund, and, you know, I'm not sure, you know, how much would actually get to the people that are over there. Right, that's why I was wondering this needs a little more research, but I just thought the germ of an idea was worthy of discussion. Yeah, I, I think if, you know, Reserve Center, they, they know who's deployed. They could, you know, get it, funnel it directly to those people for whatever they need or, you know, to send stuff to them or whatever. And it would help the people that are local in the area, too. There you go. Okay, thanks. Hey, you're more than welcome. Well, I wondered what the heck was going on out in the parking lot. Apparently, there's a weekend spa sale going on. I guess it's tomorrow, too, right? It's the largest pool and spa sale of its kind, the National Pool and Spa Show. There's a bunch of hot tubs out there and pools, and you can save a lot of dough, I guess. they got free financing and all that. You know where it is. Just come it's west of Rockside and 77, right here in the parking lot where I'd like to have the car show at the Clear Channel parking lot. You can save a lot of dough, thousands. It's big here at Clear Channel, WTAM, Mix, 106.5, Magic, and WGAR. They expect 100 hot tubs and 200 pools will be sold. they got above ground, in ground, all that. Kayak pools is going to be there. All kinds of pool companies. Yeah, well, check it out. Now, I wondered, I'm pulling in, I'm like, what are all these pools doing out in the parking lot? Well, they're having a weekend pool and spa sale right here out in the parking lot of Clear Channel. A great parking lot for a car show. It's got a flagpole right in the middle of it. Big American flag flying on there. Well, Larry, talk to me. Hey, Rick, buddy. Howdy. What's up? Hey, man, you're... you're, you're... Your uh, thing sounds awesome. Your idea for raising money with the car show, awesome. That's what I, I was thinking during the week. I thought, you know, you pull off a little tiny event like we did with the Smokers' Rights Rally, and we had no lead time, and we had lots of other stuff going on, and you promoted a little bit, and boy, it, it, it had a pretty good turnout. Now, if we got some lead time, and this is all raising money to help the troops, I would think it'd be big, big, big. Oh, man, I know me and my brother bring our cars. I got friends with cars. I got friends with bikes. I got friends that are, in, you know, bike clubs. Hey, I mean, this sounds awesome. And maybe we can, I can talk to a few people I know to have ice cream establishments. Maybe we can get some vendors to come out there and add. I can talk to a few people. That's what I need. I need, I need us, if it's a grassroots thing, I need us to be out there, you and me and then the other listeners and, and out there and saying, you know what, maybe I can do something to help. Maybe I'll shoot Rick an email. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe our company could volunteer and, and, and try and give something back to the community to help the troops. Like you said, maybe it's a hot day. Hey, ice cream, what a great idea. I didn't even, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, make it for the family and everybody. You well, know? that's right. Now, no politicians. Oh, no, keep them off. Keep uh, Jane Campbell at home making dishes and uh, cooking pies where her fat fingers ought to be. Well, you know, I mean, uh, you, you, if you go to a car show, when, when was the last time you went to a car show where you saw politicians? Mm, never. Never. They, they, we don't want them at a car show. We want to talk around. We want to walk around, talk to people, shake hands, look at their beautiful cars. Uh, it, it's a family event. We, we, we don't need to talk politics. Politics has nothing to do with it, whether or not people agreed with the war or disagreed with the war. Aside from just the troops we have in Iraq, we've got troops in 40 other countries. I know. It's, it's, we don't need the politicians there. We need this for, for the soldiers and that, you know? Absolutely right, Larry. America, like I said, this is for America, stars and bars, a cruising, American cars and bikes, for American troops. There you go, and I'll, uh, we'll come up with a snappy name. I leave that sort of thing to no Ray... No jap crap. Yeah, I, I leave that the snappy name things up to Ray Davis. He always likes to dream up the snappy names. I got your number, Rick. I'll we'll give you a call. I'll keep in touch to see what's happening. Alrighty. Okay, have a good one, buddy. I already do. Luke, you're on the air. Uh, hey, Rick. I love your idea for the car and bike show, but I wouldn't just limit it to American cars. I think it's a good idea to limit it to American cars. I mean, I think we're going to be, if, we, if I can pull this off, it's going to be so overwhelming that we won't have the space to fit any champ crap. Because I got a nice Honda Civic, you know. Well, that's nice. I love seeing that thing. Well, it's, it's nice. It's just uh, we, we got to set limits somewhere. You know what I mean? Okay. You know, I mean, we, we just, we've got a huge parking lot. We don't, we don't have, uh, you know, uh, we don't own half of the city. I mean, <laughs> you've got to set limits somewhere. If I can pull this thing off, we're going to have to set limits on how many cars and bikes can come in. Yeah. Because there's going to be so many of them that we won't know what to do with them all, I think. Well, I also got a nice American car, 69 Mustang. That's a nice car. Yeah. There you go. You could bring that. Yeah, so I'll keep in touch. Maybe I could get up there. You do that. All right. All right. Appreciate it. Yep. You know where to find me. Five seven eight eleven hundred in the classic two one six area code. 
Hi, you're on the air. Hang it in my ear, will you? Hello, you're on WTAM 1100. Hey, Rick. Yeah. Hey, my name is Frank Stevens. I belong to uh, Rock and Roll Capital Street Machine. Cool. You ever hear of us? Uh, no. Uh, we're one of the biggest car shows on Tuesday nights in Solon Commons. We're in this rock, rock and Roll Capital? Rock and Roll Capital Street Machines. Okay. And uh, I'm going to give you the president's phone number. I'll, I'll tell you what. Whatever, and maybe you can call him and see what you can set up. Yeah, I'll tell you what, because uh, I'm going to have to put you on hold, and it might be a couple of minutes. My, my screener's in the bathroom All right. <laughs> or something. So I'll do that then. Rock and Roll Capital Street Machines, you have a lot of, I would assume, American cars. Oh, definitely. You name it, we got it, babe. Don't you think it's a good idea to sort of limit this to, to just American cars yeah. and bikes? Yes, definitely. Now, I need to hear from somebody I, out there. I love it. I love your show, man. It's great, by the way. Well, thank you. I need to hear from somebody out there, from someone like Rolling Thunders, some Harley Club, some oh, group. I, I, hey, I got friends with bikes, too, just like the one caller just said and everything, too. I think this Down is... here by a canal there, they got Quaker Stick and Lube on Wednesday nights. Now, how many how many cars do you think they get at that show? At our show? Yeah. You're looking at seven to a, to a thousand cars, 700 to a thousand cars. Last Tuesday, we were turning cars away. That's how packed it was. Can you imagine if we could get that kind of... If we could pack the parking lot of Clear Channel with cars and bikes? Oh, I'm telling you. All there I'm to race... I'm telling you. This, this is definitely a possible, good possibility we, it can be done. Now, you probably know a little more about this than I do. When they have a charity car event, uh, say, like the Shoes for Kids with American Cruisers and that right, kind of... Right. What, what do they charge for you to register your car? I think it's like 10 bucks or something. 7 to 10 bucks, I think it so, is. So even if we bumped it to, say, 15 because it's going to help the troops, I right. think people pay it. Oh, definitely. No doubt about it. All right, that's what I wanted to check. That's no why I was asking. That's why I wanted the response yeah, on the but, phone. But like I said, you might want to, like I said, I, like, you know, you want to talk to the president. He can set it up. You know what I'm saying? You and him can get connected up here and go from there, you know, because I'll be willing, no problem at all. I, can, I got friends like you wouldn't believe. I got a 71 Chevelle with a big block in it. LS6? No, yep, LS6. It's not an SS, it's just a regular Malibu. Right. But I put my own motor and trance and rear end together in it. So it's got a 454. No, it's got 396. Oh, 396, okay. Four speed with a set of 411s in it. You haven't blown it up yet? Pardon me? Have you blown it up yet? Heck no. Okay. I just put the four speed back in it. I know a buddy of mine had a 69 Chevelle. It was 69? I believe it was a 69, eh, 70, right. and a 427 in it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that was original or not, but I know that he ended up pulling the motor out two or three times because he, he had to, uh, what do they call that, sleeve it. He had to sleeve oh, it. Oh, he had to re-sleeve the pistons. Yeah, because it, it screwed up. I mean, Right, right. Either they webbed out or he had to go 30 over or 60 over. Well, you know what the problem was is that a lot of people didn't seem to realize that you don't need to rev a, a, a big block as hard, as hard and high as you needed to rev a small block, and you couldn't get away with it. Exactly. But you just, you get out of the torque zone, you get past the horsepower range, and you're just, you're just revving for no good reason and taking your chances. That's it. That's, it. That's what it's about sometimes yeah. with these people the way they think. Yeah, like a four, you know, this is always interesting too. Right. I, I used to have a lot of 440 Chryslers. Uh-huh. And, you know, a 440 Chrysler, that's a big motor. Oh, yeah. It had a Holley 600 on it. Oh, yeah. Now, 600, for those who don't know, indicates, you know, it's, a, it's a how much. Yeah, CFM, it's cubic feet per minute of air and, right. and all that. And people take a small block Chevy and put dual quads on it. I says, what do you need all that carburation for? I can, run a, I can run a 440 because it looks cool. Exactly. I mean, I can run a 440 with a Holley 600 on it, and unless you're really going nuts, and just rejet it a little bit. Right. No, they're putting on a 750 double pumper on a 283 Chevy. It's like, you're nuts. <laughs> you don't need it. You're wasting, you know what I mean? You, you, right. You're taking power away. Right, right, right. You know, it's just that. Yeah. Uh, hey, I was on TV Friday night, too. Well, you were. Yeah, I live in Garfield Heights here. Yeah. And they had that sobriety check. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was on it. Oh, did you get pulled over? No, no. No, not at all. Oh, I, I see. volunteered to be interviewed. Oh, I got you. So, you know, because I got a lot of friends out there, you know, and I really care about them and that, and it's hard to replace a friend, you know? Well, you're right. You're right. And it, life is too short, you know? Hey, well, we're just visitors on this planet. That's what it seems like. That's why I felt that if uh, if I don't hear, you know, uh, all I hear out of the mayor, out of Ladybug Jane Campbell, is how we need to not smoke in bars. Or and She pushed it off and said, no, that's Matt Zone. Well, that's that's what uh, uh, a councilman Zone needs to dwell on right now is smoking in bars and restaurants. I think we need to dwell on the fact that we hear about troops dying every day. Right. So let's do something about it. And if the politicians can't get off their lazy butts and do anything about it, well, then we're going to have to do it. Well, what about, what about what's coming up Tuesday? What's going to happen Tuesday? Who's going to get rich? Not me. My no. paycheck ain't going up. No, we're getting poorer. That's right. <laughs> and, the That's roads, right. and the roads aren't getting fixed. That's right. And, you know, it's a mess. Right. I mean, I feel like, boy, if I won the lottery, I'd move to West Virginia. At least the roads are beautiful. <laughs> 
I hear you. You know, I mean, I I'm, I'm, you. I love Ohio and all my friends and family are here, but Me I don't, too. I don't like the way people are treating the poor state of Ohio. Right. I was born and raised there. Me too. Forty-six years. For, Forty-two for me. <laughs> I had a guy come up to me at the Smokers' Rights Rally last week and shake my hand and say, "Rick, thank you for being alive." Good. And I said, "Good. Well, I'm glad to be here." I'm, <laughs> Don't, don't think I'm going to argue with you there, pal. Right, right, right. I'll um, uh, put you on hold, and we'll get to you. It might be a couple of minutes. That's all right. All right, thanks, Frank. Okay. All right. Boy, I, I think I, I... Sometimes I pat myself on the back. I think it's a pretty good idea. Triple Doppler forecast from TV3 Meteorologist Betsy Kling tonight. Some possible rain out there. I was outside having a cigarette. It, it looks okay, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Low in the low 60s. Tomorrow and Tuesday, fuck ahead, shall we? Sure. Uh, low 80s both days. That that sounds nice. Hope it doesn't get too damn. I don't have I I don't have air conditioning. Uh, I live in a brick house, and it's okay if it goes down to you know the low 60s for a couple of days. But we start getting 90, 90. Edmund, you get a chance get to line five's information. Uh, he's gonna try and help out. And and the house turns into a brick oven. And so, like, last summer when it was 90, 90, 90, I don't care how many window fans you run unless you're laying in bed sweating with a fan on you. It's just, you know what I mean? You can't overcome it. It's just hot, 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 and stays hot. This year, so far, so good. Currently, 69 degrees in Cleveland. 69. How about this? You know, you could travel with the tribe to the Big Apple. Listen tomorrow for your cue to call and win Indians tickets to see a game at Jacobs Field. And then you could qualify for the big grand prize to win a trip to see the Indians play the Yankees in New York. From the big one, that's us. News Radio, WTAM 1100. Sean, you're on the air. Yeah, I, how you doing, Rick? Great. You know, I really support this uh, American thing. You know, our buddies over there is fighting their ass off. Excuse my language. I mean, if it wasn't for them, you know, hell. We, that, yes. I don't even know what to say. I'm all choked up about this. Well... I think that uh, we the people, us, you, me, everyone, I mean, even if you do not own an old car, mm -hmm. I think you could find a way to get here, and I think you could find a way that even if you did not have to, you know, we could have some way of giving donations, and we'd make sure it gets to the right spot to help out the troops. Yeah, to help our good old buddy. I mean, I, I, I talked to a woman who says she talked to her husband, and he says, oh, my God, you know, or maybe he wrote her a letter, but he says, Just, you know, all he really wanted was a bath. You can't even find clean water. And, you know, there's things that they're low on over there. There's things they'd like to have. And uh, I hate to say it, maybe, they, maybe they're low on cigarettes. I don't know. But there's things over there. I mean, do, do you really care whether you smoke if you're getting shot at? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe, they, maybe they need toothbrushes and, and toothpaste or, you know, uh, soap or who knows. There, there's got to be things that the troops need and they're wandering around. I mean, how would you like to be stuck in Iraq? Oh, God, you know. The armpit of the world. <laughs> You know, I mean, that's why I questioned what was going on. That's why I'm, I'm asking for a response at 5781100 in the 216 area code and 5781111. I opened up the contest lines as well in case you can't get through. We've got to have a proven response on the phones this evening that you would show up to a charity car and bike show of all American cars and American bikes right here in the parking lot of Clear Channel, if I can pull it off. Would you show up to show your support for our troops? We're not talking politics. There's no, no politicians involved, nothing like that. I could do a little show on a Saturday afternoon and then hang around. Everybody would have a good time and eat ice cream and, and, and eat some good food and, and shake hands and have a good time. And know, know when you go home that you did something worthwhile for the day. Hey, you, as long as a uh, politician ain't, ain't involved, I'm there. All right, Sean. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, I, I, I don't... I, I don't much care for most politicians. You know, these career politician types, they hang around forever and ever, and I, I just don't much care for them. Now, if I don't get the response that I judge desirable this evening, well, then I'm not even going to push this thing. It better be overwhelming, and I think it's a great idea, and I'm not telling you that you're, you're a communist if you don't support it, but they have to hear the response. It's got to be a good response. We had a great response for the smokers' rights rally. All night long, people called. Can I get the same response? Hell, only 25% of people in America smoke cigarettes. Don't you think that more than 25% of you Clevelanders, don't you support the troops? Call and let me know. You support this idea? Is it a good idea? Why would it be a bad idea? Is there any negative to this? I, I can't find any. Freddie, talk to me. Hello, are you there? Ricky. Yeah. Hey, how you doing, guys? Great. This is Freddie. I was down there at the uh, the smoke thing with you guys at the, 
you know, down at the bar there. I was with uh, with the We The People guys. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'm just, uh, I want to commend you for what you did there. It was a great thing, and, I, you know, I'm not a smoker. I, I like cigars, but uh, but anyway, it was a good thing, and uh, I think this is going to be an even better thing. And, uh, you know, we got we got a bunch of people. We've been doing this for a long time, you know, we, and this is, uh, this might just do it for us. This and, might just do it for everybody. I, I can't see a, I can't, I cannot see a downside. No, no, there's, there's no downside. This is, you know, these wet naps, these, these balloon knots out here, these, these, these guys that think that we're doing this for, uh, you know, a pat on the back, uh, you know, money and it. No, we've been doing this since 1994, guy, and we haven't asked for a thing. It's all coming out of our pocket. We, 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 you know, we paid the freight on all this stuff, and this isn't for us. This is for them, and this is to show support. For us, for we the people, this is, we're going to be known as the no-name offense, guy. Remember the no-name defense? Yeah. But well, we're the no-name offense. Any, anything, to, anything to do with what's good for America, that's what we're for. The cars, now they even want to do away with the, with the NASCAR, the Winston Cup. What, what's that all about? Well, it's got the name Winston. I'm thinking uh, of some... Yeah, I mean, you know, but come on. I, I used to be there. I wish, I wish I was still there. I used to help out on the teams, but that's another story. But, America's but. changed since those days when I remember the TV commercial where the kid walks in to buy the, buy the Stroh, pardon me, buy the Stroh's beer in the bar, and, uh, and the bartender looks at him and asks for his ID and then gives him a beer and says, Happy birthday, kid. Yeah, yeah, well, this, but this is, uh, I was out there with the, you know, we, we were handing the flags out, and, uh, you know, people just, uh, they just, uh, their, their, their attention span is just not there. But this thing, this might be a good thing. I think this is going to be a real good thing. And, uh, I if, hope I get my, if I get my cars out there, I'll be out there too to help, believe me. All right, appreciate it, Freddie. Right, have a good one, right? Good show. All right, thanks. Hey. Yep, and I already do. Yeah, I was at a flag giveaway. Over there, the Chuck Hole filled Ridge Road over there. Havers Automotive sitting out there for hours in the parking lot watching the cars just drive right by. And they might wave or honk, and we're giving away flags and asking for donations for the USO. And people pull in and look around and maybe pull out, and, but dozens and dozens of cars would just drive right by. Well, what's up with that? They just drive right by. Sheesh. You know, it, it was free. You could stop in and give a buck. Try and help out the troops. Gee, don't you think they're helping us out? They're putting their lives on the line? Indy, talk to me. Hey, how you doing, Rick? All right. Hey, I just wanted to give you the idea. Um, I'm a former veteran myself, and uh, I was overseas. And uh, one thing that the troops would really appreciate would be a 60-minute calling card. Um, if you, if we could have maybe have everybody that comes to the rally bring a 60-minute calling card, that would make all the difference for them. Well, there you go. How much does that cost? Probably like five, six bucks, maybe. So if we could get the money. We could raise some money from the car show and the bike show itself. What are you doing? Stacking aluminum ladders? Eh, something like that. It works. Okay. Uh, it, sound, it sounds like aluminum. Am I, am I right? Yes. Oh, see, I got a good ear for car buzzers and metal. Um, yeah. And if people showed up and wanted to, uh, and, and, you know, we could have some, maybe we could have somebody. There's another way someone could help. We could get someone that sells phone cards, calling cards, to have a booth out there and have them selling these cards to help out the troops. Absolutely. Because if you spend money, the, the amount of money you raise and everything, I don't know if that'll make that big of a difference. But I remember one time when I was overseas, they had. Uh, there was a situation where, like, MCI or Sprint, in order to, if you filled out a credit card or a phone card application, you got a five-minute phone call. Well, you had that, that booth or whatever they had going on was backed up a mile down the street from uh, soldiers trying to uh, call in uh, or, or try, you know, just wanting to make that five-minute phone call home. So. Indy, I'm up on it. I appreciate it. Great idea. I will work out the details. You're fearless leader, and we'll figure out what we're doing. I'm Rick Gilmore, the thinking man's friend, the driving man's friend, the smoking man's friend, your friend. More of the program after these important words and coverage of what in the world's happening on Cleveland's only news radio station, WTAM 1100. LeBron, LeBron James. James. LeBron, LeBron James. 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 LeBron James.
Rick Gilmore. Oh, don't pay attention to Ray. On News Radio WTAM 1100. Oh, I don't know about that. Mike Trevisano heard post rush here at uh, 3. But you can dunk Ray. Program director Ray Davis is going to be uh, out there at the Glenbeck Real American 4th of July at Cahoon Park on the 4th of July, of course. Maybe you can dunk him. Take a chance on dunking him. Who else can you dunk? Uh, Mike Trevisano, Paul Ratto from the Mike Trevisano program. They got so many events planned for this Friday. I don't know why you'd want to go anyplace else. I know a lot of people go to Edgewater every year. I know maybe you go to Clegg Park every year. Maybe at some point in your travels, stop by Cahoon Park. Maybe you can't stay all day. We got all things going on all day. Sack races, programming, singing angels, country music, regular music, patriotic music, Glenn Beck. We got Jingles the Clown out there doing them balloon folding or whatever they call that. What is that called? Balloonagami? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fold, <laughs> make giraffes and animals and hats and stuff out of balloons. You can get a hold of him if you want, if you're going to have a party. Give Jingles the Clown a jingle at 216-429-2252. Or just go online at jinglestheclown.com. We got uh, Ray Anderson and his exotic animal show. And he's going to be uh, there. And it's a hands-on animal show for children. It's going to be a, a family event. He's been on TV. He's trained animals for commercials. Maybe, maybe he trained that dog on Frasier. Come out and ask him. I don't know. He's done reptile shows at the zoo. You book Ray, too, if you want for an event. And in the classic 216 area code, you want an exotic animal show? 216-381-1130. They're even going to have a stilt-walking Uncle Sam. And no real American 4th of July is complete without a stilt-walking Uncle Sam. Can't see that at Edgewater, can you? He'd, his stilts would sink right into the beach. So I'm checking your response tonight, seeing if we can put together, and we got to think big here. Help out the troops. An all-American charity car and bike show. Right here, I could have it out here in the parking lot of Clear Channel, you know. God bless Billy Aftura wrote that new cookbook, Cooking in the Comfort Zone. I read the book. Great book. God bless him for volunteering to cook for the event. Well, I haven't heard from anybody. What about Gordon Food Supply, you know? What about Giant Eagle or Tops or somebody? Why don't we get some, can, can we get somebody uh, on the phone here if, if we can't get you to call in tonight? Maybe you work at one of them places. Maybe you, maybe you can go in tomorrow and say, hey, boss, it's a write-off. It's charity. They're going to need some food. You got to think big. Maybe a couple other people would say, you know, I cook for a living, too, and I volunteer to cook. I think Billy might, God bless him, but I think he might be a little overwhelmed. There might be a whole, whole lot of people here, a whole, whole lot of Clevelanders to try and do a whole, whole lot of good to help out the troops. Anything wrong with that? I want to hear from you. I, I want to see how the response is on the phones. 5, 7, 8, 1100. I want to see what the response would be, even if you do not own an old car. Would you show up? Would you show up and buy a calling card for the troops so they can call home? Would you do that? Can I rally your support? Because without your support, I cannot do this alone. But I thought instead of just coming to work and cashing my check, and sitting and talking nonsense and gibberish, although I'm quite good at talking nonsense and gibberish, I'm probably the best talk radio host in the country to talk nonsense and gibberish. I am your Seinfeld of radio, a show about nothing sometimes. When there's something important, we're talking about it. I think this is important. Catherine Hepburn was 96 years old and died. That's too bad. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. But when they say somebody died of old age, well, hell, you know, what am I going to do? Debate that? Larry, you're on the air. Are you there? Hello? Yeah, it's your turn. Oh, how you doing, Rick? All right. Hey, I was just calling to give my support for the car show here. Well, I think it would be a good idea. I think so, too. I think you have a lot of good ideas sometimes, and uh, I'd definitely be down there, and I know a couple of people with bikes and some old cars. Yeah, I think I could pull it off. I think if we get a hold of some of these, I can get a hold, get a hold of some of these car clubs during the week, that sort of thing. I think we could make it maybe even bigger than, uh, maybe, maybe we'd have to change the venue. I think so. I think, I think it would be a good idea, you know, all, uh, all the American cars. Uh, uh, American cars, American bikes to raise money for our American troops. I, I don't have a car. My dad does, but if he can't make it, I'll bring his car down. There you go. I, I, like I say, I don't know how many. I don't. Uh, I don't know how many cars this parking lot holds. If I keep pushing this thing, maybe they'll have to say, "Gee, you're going to have to get a shopping center." Or, but I would think that uh, I would think we could work something out. Well, look down down the street at Quaker State over there. Well, I would prefer to have it someplace 
Because I, I want to make sure that everything's volunteer. The people cooking the food volunteered. The people that, that gave the food, that was all, that was all charity. And, uh, you know, God bless people who have a business. I just don't seem to feel the need to... We, we don't need anyone spending any money that day that all the profits do not go to charity. I know everybody's got to eat, but it seems to me that most of the restaurants out there, m most of them are doing okay until, you know, Ladybug Jane Campbell decides to uh, sidestep us or something, or, or Councilman Matt Zone decides the most important issue that we have in the city of Cleveland is no smoking in bars and restaurants, that sort of thing. We have bigger fish to fry. Nick, talk to me. You there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing just fine. I'm good. I was just talking about the car show. I think that's a great idea. I'm 22 years old, young guy, and I think that's a good thing that we need to do, uh, young or old. It's, a, it's just a good thing, you know? I think so, too, because... It's, it's not like we're raising money for, I don't know, some nebulous charity. I, right. I, I don't know if I give money to, I'm not going to name any charities, but, you know, sometimes you wonder, I don't know, um, I mean, polio's cured. Right, exactly. It, it's something that, you know, uh, I, I went to school with kids, you know, who went off to different service stuff. That's something that we can all relate to. You know, everybody can probably name somebody they know that's in one of the services. It's like you're helping them out, exactly. I guarantee it. I guarantee if you're sitting and you have not phoned in, you might want to feel a little guilty about the fact that you know someone who is in the service right now, and if you wonder, well, how can I help, or I'm worried about whether they, uh, I'm thinking, well, this is how we can help. Exactly. I, I think it's a, it's a great idea. I'm, I'm definitely going to be there. I, you're saying you're, I guess, a Chrysler guy, 440. I got a 69 and a half, uh, 446 pack Super V. I'll definitely be there. Is it green? No, it's uh, actually maroon. It's, uh, unfortunately, it's not. It's a uh, 96. Uh, Dodge and Strapid Maroon. I uh, changed the color way off. I probably should have, but I love the color. I knew a guy had one of those in a green, and maybe it was a 70. Uh, it had the fiberglass hood with the hood pins. Yep, yep, exactly, with the, with the black strap around the back. I guess you get white also, but yeah, it's like a lime green. Yeah, well, this one was more like a, almost an avocado green. It was kind of an ugly color. And yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It had a bench, shift, uh, bench, bench seat, I should say, column shift uh, torque flight. And a 446 pack in it, and I mean that thing would fly, and it was—I think it was dyno tuned by Ed Pink or something. It had a sticker in the back window, and, wow. and it, it would fly. And the, the kid was working on it. We were in high school at the time. His daddy bought it for him. His daddy was a lawyer, and uh, it was—I think they paid something like 5,800 for it in 1978. I mean that was 79, and I mean a lot of money in a beautiful car. It only had about 20,000 miles on it, and one night. He's working on the car, and he goes in the house, and he falls asleep, and then he had blocked in his dad, and his dad woke him up early in the morning and said, you got to move your car, kid. You blocked me in. So he gets in the thing, starts it up, drives up the street, and realizes when the hood flow, uh, flew over the roof of the vehicle and landed and ruined it, the fiberglass, uh, scraped all the way down the street, that he, had, uh, he, he forgot to put the hood pins back on. Yeah, that's, uh, that is not good. I, I saw somebody do that down at uh, Dragway 42 down by, like, uh, Lodi. He took off, flew down, going down drag ship, and all of a sudden there was a six-pack hood just floating in the air, looking like a flying saucer flying around. Now, what would that cost to replace nowadays? Oh, God, I, I don't even know. You could probably, I'm, you could get it year one, but I have got, it could be anywhere up to, if you get original, it could almost be a $1,000 just for original. That's what I was thinking. I mean, they, they got a lot of reproduction stuff out right, there. Right, right. Uh, but if you're going for a true original, it could be $1,000. I know, like, a grill, like, I'm scared death I'm always going to hit, like, a bird. Because if I get a, hit a bird and crack my grill, I'm picking up every piece on the road and going it back together. <laughs> That's ridiculous, Christ. Well, I appreciate you calling in to show your support. Hey, no problem. Have a good one. All right. I already do. Jesus Christ. You're like, you're like a bad penny or something. Rick. Norm Ezzy, you keep turning up. Hey. Yeah. Carmine from the Ramika Club just called me. Yeah. He wants to know if he can bring his 51 Cadillac. Absol no bullet holes in it. Absolutely. What do you think? The more the merrier. I think this is a good idea. I think it'll raise money to help the troops. I just got a call from a friend of mine that has an in with the Memphis drive-in. Yeah. What do you think? Well, yeah, here's what I got to do is if I can get this thing off the ground and it really starts to grow some legs, yeah. uh, we may not, we may have to have a larger venue than the parking lot here at okay. Clear Channel. We might, we might. I don't know. You know, I went and just sprung this on everybody. I didn't even run it by uh, Ray Davis. I didn't. Well, I didn't. Mr. Davis knows it's a win-win, and the people of Cleveland can pump their throat correctly because we could be the first city in the nation in spite 
fight as the demagogues at City Hall and do something right for the troops. Whether you're for or against, it's for the troops. They need comfort items, blah, blah, blah. We the people can do it. You, me, Rick, Ray Davis, Trevisano, even the guy Glenn Beck was coming in 4th of July. Bada bing, bada boom, we can get it done. Now, it's a win. It's a W. The, uh, the Memphis drive in how many cars does it hold? I have no idea. I haven't been there since 1963. I know. I mean, I haven't been to... Well, in fact, Memphis drive-in was the last drive-in that... Uh, well, you know, it's the Memphis triple. I guess. We I used mean, to call it the Memphis nipple. because it was, I, I have... Well, I really, come on, we're bringing back nostalgia, but it can be done. My phones have been ringing since you started on the broadcast. I got thrown out of there for riding in. and In fact, my buddy Matt called earlier, and, and another friend of ours had a great big old Pontiac, and me and him hid in the trunk of the thing so that we could get in for free, <laughs> and they had some Puerto Rican kid that worked there just to, you know, <laughs> make sure that people didn't sneak in, and all of a sudden, we get out of the trunk, and he comes up, and he's like, Senor, Senor, you know you know." Pay, you know, pay, and I, I, we paid. No, you know, pay. Show me ticket stub. I didn't have a ticket. It's through the whole, the whole car load of us got thrown out. So we went down to Quigley and drag raced. Uh, okay, well, I don't want to follow that one. Back. Right. But look, these people that are here in your broadcast tonight, look, yeah, Rick. They got it. These people are the ones that can contact the media, get this thing going, contact the agencies out here, the, the people that there's facilities out here. There, there are. I mean, we've got to be able to get doable, Rick. This is doable. I mean, look at if somebody like they work for Cisco Foods or one of those or, or giant, we, or the gross big big chain thing. We, you know, if this turns out as big as I think it could be, absolutely, we're going to need some food. Well, not only that, but let, let me tell you something. And something else, I got a friend of mine that rents tents. Okay, tents. Okay. I don't want to mention his name because of the airtime and all that, but tents. We can get canopies. It, it, this is doable, Rick. This I know. Is doable. I know. I, I sat all week thinking about, you know, geez, we did the smokers' rights rally, and on a shoes, I, I did it on, on, like, I on like no notice. And I thought, boy, we could really put a W on. People we got the power. All they got to do is pick up the phones, make the phone calls. You know, you know where, you know how to get a hold of me. You know, buy, and this is doable, Rick. I know. And listen, I'm going to let you go. Get all these calls in. Folks, don't let Gilmore down. I got to go. Rick, by the way. Yes. If I go to the Memphis driving, you think that Puerto Rican will let me in? <laughs> I'll see you. All right. Later. Yeah, Norm from uh, We the People. He's got his own agenda going on there trying to help out, too. There's a lot of people out there that have, that have had an agenda to help out the troops and to inform people and to try and do some good that, that for nothing. I mean, for no pay, for, for, for no money. You know what I mean? That's the kindness of our hearts here in Cleveland. I mean, regardless of our differences, everyone wants to support the troops, don't they? Regardless of how you feel about the war, yeah, you'll get the occasional person that says, oh, you know, the, the, the war is hell. Yeah, war is hell. That doesn't mean that there are not human beings, that there are not Clevelanders, that there are not people. And they are people, and we're only here for a short period of time. Sometimes way far too short a period of time. Who are overseas protecting our interests and your ability or my ability to sit and spout off on the radio or call up or walk around or burn the flag or do whatever the hell you want to do. Well, but guess who, guess who fought for your right to do that? That's the American soldier. No matter how you feel about me, no matter how you feel about my opinions, or no matter how I feel about you, it does not matter. I was born in this town 42 years ago and have no intention of leaving unless I got old and gray and won the lottery and would move someplace warm. Aside from the weather, I have no complaints. I like Cleveland. There's a lot of unlikable things in this town. There are a lot of unlikable politicians in this town. There's a lot of real estate in this town that's not being used properly, or money shifting hands, or God knows what. There's a lot, of, a lot of dirty politics in Cleveland. They used to call it the dirty city. And the truckers called it that. Yeah, I'm rolling on into the dirty city. That was Cleveland. Now, I remember Mayor Perk's hair on fire. I remember the Cuyahoga River on fire. I remember Dennis Kucinich's incompetence in office as mayor. I've heard stories about Bob Weissman whispering in his ear because he couldn't have an original thought of his own. A feather could sail from one ear to the other on that man's head. And people keep voting for him. Betty Babushka with her pickled egg, and she just keeps pulling the lever for the same old, same old. It comes a time when they aren't going to fix it for us. They ain't going to do it. It's not getting done. I've been here too long. It's 42 years. I've been here too long. I've seen it happen. Nothing, nothing's getting done. 
Yeah, the big, big, big projects are getting done, and, and the people with money keep getting richer and richer. And everyone else I know keeps getting poorer and poorer, including me, including Edmund, my board op. He's pointing to himself, too. The bills just keep coming in. They just keep pouring in. I'm not here to cry the blues about my financial situation. However, if you are elderly and well-to-do and wonder who to leave your money to, uh, I'll put it to good use. Remember who entertained you in your twilight years. Don't leave, don't leave it to your cat. Yes, Edmund? No, no, no. I'm, I'm just, I got too many calls here. I, I was going to replay that, that guy that called and we talked about laundry fluffing up because I could hear his dryer running. Because you know what? I just, I don't know. We'll see how the calls go. Maybe I will. You know, I mean, for some reason, that call just strikes me as, <laughs> it's just so silly. It's about nothing. We can do nothing another night. Tonight I'm dwelling on this and the lines are lit and uh, I want your response. And it looks like it's been pretty overwhelming and I'm probably going to have conversations with management about it and see if we can pull this off. Like I said, I just look out in the parking lot here and I think, well, pretty big lot. I don't know, how big? What if this thing got really big? Would we have to have two shows? Would we have to have, you know, cars in front and bikes in the back lot? I mean, we've got two big lots there. We've got three big lots there. If this is doable. I'm just looking at it from a budget point of view. We could get a radio station like Magic 105.7, Cleveland's oldie station, right? Pipe some music out. That would, that would cover the DJ. They could cross-promote with us. Doesn't that sound like a win-win? We're right here. We just pull the truck around and raise up the antenna, right? We're right here. I have a proper bathroom in case I, I've got my key card. I can get inside in case I had to go potty. I wouldn't have to use a porta potty Sorry if you showed up at the show. See, we'd need porta potties We'd need those. How about those porta sinks that you see, right? Because you ever you go to some places and they had those porta potties and then there was no place to wash your hands. Ew. We need to get VFW halls behind this. We, like I said, we, we're, we'd need a lot of food. Well, we get a big grocery store chain. Get a hold of me, Gilly, G-I-L-L-Y at W-T-A-M dot com. If this thing really gets rolling, maybe we'll get a hold of you. Talk it over. Talk it over with your management when you go to work tomorrow. See what they think. What about one of these places in town that, uh, that sells, like, ribs? Or something? You could get somebody setting up a stand. I don't know how that works. They charge a certain amount. How much go? I don't know. I mean, I would think we could, we could focus on most of the event, 99% of the event, and no politicians involved, just to raise money to help the troops. I guess you start getting people in unless they're writing it off. I mean, I don't think we're going to be giving away free food. Uh, unless it's a, a write-off. But we're going to need more than, you know, one dude volunteering to help. God bless him. But I, I, I think this, maybe I'm, I'm getting in over my head here. I don't know. We'll find out. Tank, you're on the air. Yo, Kelly, how you doing? All right. Good. Hey, I've been listening to you all night. And this sounds like a great idea for the city. It sounds like a great idea for the troops. If I know from experience, these guys need to see the support of friends, family, neighbors, and everybody around that knows that they're thought about every day, that knows that there's people here on the home front that care about them. And if the, everybody shows up for this thing, it'll be great. I can imagine it would be overwhelming, and I think that overwhelming is good. We would want people to be turned away. There would be so many cars. We would want people to say, gee, I'll have to park and walk up the street. We would want people to say, you know, no matter whether I can get my car in or not, I want to come in and where can I help? How, what can I, you know, where do I donate? What do, what do I do to help? Exactly. Here's a suggestion. Have a volunteer booth. Have a, have a booth right there that you want to volunteer and help one of the vendors. You want to volunteer and look down a car. You want to volunteer and anything. Anything to, for somebody to pitch in and help out with anything that they can just for being there. That would be great, too. Because like, the guy that, that wants to donate his food and stuff, you know, if he needs volunteers, I'm sure there's people out there that will raise their hand, step forward, and, and get their elbows dirty. Well, that you was know, the that problem. Was I thought, mistake. I think he's volunteering to cook, and I thought, not, well, we're going to need the food then. I mean, I don't expect one guy to come in and, and have him cook for 5,000 or 500 or whatever amount of people. I mean, we're going to need some help here. That's why I thought, right. we're going to need volunteers. And, well, right, you need somebody to do the dishes, too. 
We need, well, there you go. We'd need someone to donate, you know, say, paper plates or, or plastic sparks and all that kind of thing. I mean, everything, right. everything should come from within the community as a charity event so that the only out-of-pocket expenses that we got are what you can dig in and then get, them, get the moths out of your wallet and see what you can pony up to try and help out the troops. Exactly. It'd be a family event. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be great. I think everybody would have a good time. You know, one thing that this community likes to do is rally around the flagpole and everybody pitch in to help somebody else. Amen and hallelujah. Thanks, Tank. You're welcome, Joe. All right. Chuck, you're on the air. Hi, yeah. Uh, I'm just sitting here listening to the radio here and hearing about your idea for the, uh, for the charity air. And um, people have mentioned the uh, Memphis Theater. Well, I just want to let you know if it ever did get overbooked, there is a, uh, a big parking lot back there that American Greetings has at their employees park. Not but uh, 30 steps away from the Memphis Theater where people can go and park their cars, too, as well. All right, I'll keep that in mind. See, uh, details are sketchy, but we have three big parking lots here. I just thought it would be, I don't know, it was just my idea. I thought that having it here at the radio station was just an extra plus. I, I, I guess what I wanted to do was try and consolidate this as much as possible so that we don't overwhelm the details. We, we, not too much minutia get one big food company or a grocery store of some sort to say, what do you need? How much you think you need? Even if they're donating, they're coming out and putting up a truck or a big banner or something. They'll get business out of it somewhere down the road. Right? Right. Paper plates, all this stuff. There's, there's a lot of stuff, but I want to try and consolidate it. I don't want us to have to get a hold of 52 different people. Let's make this bada bing, bada boom, you know, done. Let's, we got this, we got that, we got that. There should be people, tomorrow morning I should check my email and it should be overwhelmed by people from big companies in this town that would say, what do you need, Rick? Tell us when the day is. Tell us how long, tell us what you need. Thanks for calling, thanks for listening. Do I got time to sneak in another call there? All right. And thanks to you, uh, Edmund, for pulling the strings and pushing the buttons and dials and keeping this program on track. And I want to remind you, remember, during the week, you work for a big company, see if they're interested in helping. Let me know. Matt, talk to me. Hey, hey, Rick, how you doing? All right. Um, I'd love to go to a classic car show. I think you met my father uh, last week at the smoke, smoke out. Um, Russell, I wish I could have made it, but I couldn't go. Yo, oh, Matt Sysak, how are you? Oh, yeah, but I, but I uh, enjoy your show, and uh, me and my buddies are big supporters of, the, of classic cars. would love to come. I appreciate the support. Great, thank you. Oh, you're more than welcome. Well, there you have it. What do you think, Edmund? Response pretty good? A lot of people called. I think maybe more people called than called about the uh, smokers' rights rally. And I think it would turn out to be huge, huge. Look at the lead time we've got. We could plan this for somewhere in August or September. It's a great idea. It's just, I'm gonna need a, I'm gonna need some help doing this. I want I want this to be big, and I want people to say, by God, we went home feeling good that we did something to help the troops. Like I said, thanks for calling, thanks for listening. Drudge Report after the top of the hour. I'm out of here. Keep it right here on the big one. Coverage of what in the world's happening. I can't think of a better station. Can you? There's no other AM stations in town, are there? I don't know. My my dial's always on this one. Maybe maybe I'm biased. I'm Rick Gilmore, the driving man's friend. This is Cleveland's only news radio, WTAM 1100. Thanks, Ray. I love you, Gilby. The big one's going to the big...